3D printers or FDM 3D printers. Which one to choose? We spend the same time and amount of material to print the same piece in these two different technologies. Want to see the result? Hello, my baby looters! What's up? I'm Julie or Baby Julie or Julie Baby and I'm going to be hosting some 3D printing videos here at Lutz YouTube channel for you guys. So, in this video, you're going to see the main features about resin 3D printers and FDM ones. We are going to compare the two kinds of technologies. After passing through all these topics, it is going to be so much easier for you to understand and choose when to use each of them. Of course, if you don't have a 3D printer yet, it is going to be much more simple to make a choice about buying a resin one or an FDM one. But before we get down to business, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button because we're going to be posting a lot of cool content around here. Okay. If you have been following our channel for a while, you know that we have a lot of videos talking about resin 3D printing. But what about filament? Well, since we are using it to print some of our models, as you saw in this last video, we thought we could give it a friendly treatment here on this channel too. FDM 3D printing is a technology that has been widespread in the market for the longest time. So here's the fast resin on how it works. The materials used to manufacture the prints are these filament rolls of different types of plastic, such as PLA, well known for its ease of printing. The filament is inserted into the printer and pushed by an engine that guides it through the hot end, which is a heating block where the plastic melts and comes out through a fine nozzle, usually 0.4 mm in diameter. The high of each layer in FDM technology normally varies between 0.1 mm and 0.3 mm. In this technology, there are several settings that can be changed to obtain better quality, greater resistance or greater agility when printing. The ideal melting temperature for each material may still vary according to layer thickness or printing speed. Also, many other factors can be changed and interfere with a quality print including the configuration of the automatic supports that allows the printing of a well-made part or a part full of flaws and sticky supports, almost impossible to be removed. Otherwise, resin 3D printing, that you already know a little better, uses resins that can have different physical features, such as greater flexibility and greater resistance. In addition to that, pigmenting and customizing the color of the material is possible. These resins undergo a chemical reaction when exposed to UV light, and it is through this process that the machine solidifies the resin in layers to materialize the 3D models. To print, we put the resin in this tank, which has a thin transparent plastic film on the bottom. Below this tank, there is an LCD screen that delimits the passage of UV light for each layer that is solidified. Most resin printers have a much higher quality, with pixels of 0.05 mm or smaller. The thickness of each layer normally varies between 0.1 mm and 0.01 mm. There are also fewer configuration variables that interfere with the final result of the piece. The main factor is the time that the resin is exposed in each layer, and this varies depending on the resin, the printer used, and also the defined layer height. In the case of supports, there are also essential in resin printing. Our team performs the work of manually creating all the supports and also testing each of the printings to guarantee a higher heat height with all the loose pieces. Well, let's do some comparison between the two, shall we? Just by knowing the resolutions and seeing this image of what each technology delivers, it is clear that resin printers have a much higher quality in terms of dimensional accuracy and the ability to reproduce small details. But the printing area and the time for printing each piece is different between technologies. Time is a precious thing in our lives, isn't it? FDM printers need to deposit thin lines divided between the perimeters, the infill and the supports, completing each of the layers before starting the next one. 
In this case, the greater the number of the pieces or the larger the size of the piece, the longer it would take to print. On the other hand, resin printers can solidify a complete layer in a matter of seconds, regardless of the number of parts or their volume. So placing one or ten equal parts spread across the build plate would take the same time. Therefore, by investing in a larger resin printer, you end up increasing your ability to produce more pieces together and also facilitating the printing of larger pieces like royalties. As FTN printers already have larger printing areas, normally above 20 cubic centimeters, it already allows printing complete parts without the need to deal with several cycles of printing, assembling the parts and finishing the seams. As is the case, of this dice tower. Even printing on a medium resin printers, it had to be divided into six parts, spanning a total of more than 30 hours printing and 710 grams of resin, including the supports that go to the trash. In addition to another two hours of finishing to fill in the seams between the pieces and send the marks of the supports. On the other hand, the same piece that was made with a low quality in the filament printer took about 53 hours, 530 grams of filament and less than 2 minutes to remove the supports to get to this result without any finishing. Now that we took this little time to talk about time, let's talk about processes. Both technologies have the qualities and the specifications that can be better according to the type of port. But another big difference in between them is the process before and after printing. In FTM printers, we are dealing with a plastic that, after being melted by the machine, becomes solid plastic again. So, the only waste produced by these printers are pieces of solid plastic, which can still be recycled. Does it make a little mess? Yes! but it's easy to clean. However, in terms of resin printers, we need to be careful. As it is a chemical compound, everything that gets in touch with the resin must not come into contact with the skin. That is, in addition to using gloves, containers, tools, cleaning papers, everything must be handled separately and the garbage disposed of correctly. To clean the remain resin from the printing part, 99% alcohol is normally used. Still, we have to do two more steps until we have the mini ready and safe for handling. First, we have to freely wash the printed parts that come out dirty with liquid resin in alcohol and remove most of the supports. After the alcohol evaporates completely, we must do a final cure by exposing the piece to UV light. To complete the process, we have to finish the pieces, which, however efficient it may be, guarantees a nice final result with the removal of support marks and the proper preparation for painting the piece. Time, processes, and... Let's go to maybe one of the things most people want to know about 3D printers. Cost. The cost to buy a printer is similar between the two technologies. For less than $200, it is possible to buy a 3D printer. If we consider the whole material used, there is also a similarity. The cost of resins and filaments in the market is on average $30. So, it is clear that in both technologies there are more expensive and cheaper materials with features for specific applications. As in both technologies, it is possible to modify several parameters. Let's compare the weight of a piece and the printing time of a 75mm file. Gouging is this miniature that we have available for free on our website. It uses about 54 grams of resin and in filament it would spend just over 48 grams. Very similar, but printing on the resin takes less than 7 hours, compared to almost 14 hours on the filament printer. But what if we try to match print time? What will be the result? For this we have to change the thickness of the layers in the FTM printer leaving the model very coarse, with little representation of the details to be able to print the same file in less than 7 hours. The difference in expense is evident when we create larger pieces. This dragon head, which is a prop from April's Fantasy Signature, was made in 11 parts on the resin printer and weighs 1,230 grams, and took 87 hours of printing. 
In the FDN printer, the same head that we divided into 8 parts to facilitate printing weighed only 700 grams and took a little over 72 hours of printing in low quality. Due to the limitation in printing such thin parts with filament, it is kind of impossible to print some of the 32mm miniatures we create. Some minis like the Tavern Keeper of our welcome pack are even possible, but thin areas such as weapons, claws, staffs and wings begin to be challenging and the result cannot reach the quality of the same pieces made in resin. But they are still better than paper characters for your gameplay, right? We know that, in addition to being able to print faster, resin printers also deliver much higher quality and the larger printing area allows you to upscale larger pieces without so many cuts. Although we must pay attention to the necessary care when handling resins, this is not an impediment to venturing with this technology. There is a wide variety of files available specifically for filament printers. Despite the lower quality compared to resin, it is still extremely valuable to print many many types of parts, such as terrains, props and statues. After all, the choice depends on many factors, but with so many features in favor of resin printers, will a filament 3D printer become the past? No! There is use for both technologies, as they work with different materials and applications. And these are the main features of resin printers and FDN printers. I hope I helped you guys to clarify some doubts you had about these two technologies. Tell me in the comments below which one you think is the best 3D printer for you after watching this video. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye!